Let me show you how to make a quick and easy, realistic looking, 3D looking standing seam roof that casts shadows. We're going to use Photoshop for this. You could, of course, use something online like Photopea. I'm going to make a selection here. I'm actually going to use my magic wand tool. Maybe I'll set the tolerance up to 60 and I'll be able to select these fins and shift select the next fin. And that part will be very, very easy to make my selections. Now, from there, I'm going to invert my selection by holding control shift i that'll invert my selection i want to make sure that my layer is unlocked by clicking the lock button and it will convert it from a background to layer zero and now i can hit the delete key and remove all those pixels which is what is being indicated by that checkerboard pattern here this is just leaving my fins and that's it so i'm going to hit control d to deselect and i want to do one little trick here that will just help the overall look of this is i'm going to use an eraser all right i'm going to make it a really hard edge and i'm just going to erase the bottom couple of pixels from these what will be 3d fins now that i've erased that let me go ahead and export this i'm going to export this to I'm going to overwrite one that I already had here and let's get into Chief Architect and you're going to modify your roof planes. So you'll get into your roof planes. What you're going to get into is first the structure panel of that roof. Then you're going to click the edit button on the surface. Okay, edit button on surface. This will bring you the roof surface definition. You'll make a copy of whatever base layer you have here. And it would be good if this is just a metal texture okay it's something like aluminum and then hit insert above and then we'll double click on the texture here and this will bring you to this dialog box now this works on versions prior to x17 any version that accepts png files that have transparency okay but we're in x17 this ends up being a lot easier to kind of work with and so i've got a fin texture here and i'm going to edit it From the edit menu in the texture panel, I'm going to go ahead and hit select and I'm going to import that new texture that I just created. So I'm going to, in this case, use a replace with, whereas you would use import new. Okay, so I'm going to use replace with. It's going to warn me that it's being used in some plan. And here is that fin texture that I just created. And let me press OK. Now that I've done that and I've applied that transparent texture on top of my roof panel, we can even see this if we get into the little preview window here and change the rendering mode. So let's change this rendering mode to just standard and you can see what's happening here. It's actually creating what looks like some geometry. Now the one thing I forgot to tell you about is because I made, oh geez, I just changed that to flagstone. I don't know why. Because I erased that bottom little edge, what I really want to do is I want to make this be stretched to fit in the Y axis. So let me find this standing seam. There we go. Let me edit this texture. And I'll make sure stretch to fit is checked in the Y axis. Okay. And you'll see what this does. Let me go ahead and press OK. That is now being applied here. We can see that it is creating some kind of geometry. I've got a quarter inch thickness. I'm going to make copies of this by clicking this insert above a few times. And you can see what's happening. It's essentially stacking those textures. Now it doesn't look perfect from here, but when we get back into our plan and take a look at this, look at this, this is going to rebuild for a second. And there we go. That looks like some 3D standing seam. I'll go ahead and let this build for just one more second. We can kind of pan around and see what's happening here. You can see it's creating these individual layers. Now the reason I deleted this bottom little edge here and then chose stretch to fit is if you've done it just perfectly, it might be that we get rid of this little discrepancy. And also you might throw in some kind of a shadow board to kind of hide that detail as well, or kind of complete the entire look of this thing. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply some kind of metal texture here. I applied some kind of metal texture underneath all these fins. Keep in mind, these are all textures. If we use the eyedropper here, it's going to pick up that see-through texture, whereas I'm trying to pick up that texture just underneath. And I'm doing that in this case just so I can apply it to this gutter. Simple enough.
So if I did that right, I got that base texture that's aluminum underneath and I'm applying it to my gutter profile here, which it looks like I have two gutter profiles. Oops, I get to delete one of these. Anyways, that ends up looking like a really sharp standing seam. Let me move the sun around a little bit so we can really see this thing. There you go, look at that. Isn't that cool? Does in fact look like a 3D standing seam. Pretty sharp. Hope that helps you out. Play around with this. Tell me what settings you end up with. Let me know how this all comes together when you've got it finally worked out exactly how you want it. And share it with the community. Let us know what kind of settings you put into yours.